tired of you saying, oh, it's being handpicked. It is not being handpicked. I've, I'm asking people to speak and they're going, no, no, no. Built to contain our most dangerous criminals and paramilitary prisoners, I've been given unprecedented access to Macabre Prison. Coming in? I can't see us. Question is, will I get back out again? <laughs> and I'm bringing you in with me to meet the men who call it home and find out what leads to a life inside. We're like News of me being inside has spread like wildfire. The prisoners are deeply suspicious. I want to see for myself how the prison system works and I will not be pulling any punches when I'm talking to these criminals. They've put themselves in here. Oh, you can get high up whenever I get out. Eh? What, uh, hold, hold on a minute. Well, hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What's, a, what's a tie up? Tie it's a tie up, what I think it is. Yeah, we'll be tie up and still rob you. Obviously. Yeah. Like, listen, well, I always think it was something serious. I like the sound of that. I know he was joking. Of course he was joking. The prisoners have no doubt about what leads them back in here, time and time again. You know, you don't really care about us, but see if someone gets out, right, and no address, they're going to go and take drugs, the probation is putting the, 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 the public at risk as well, and not just us, the public, they, they take tablets and they don't know what they're doing. They'll go out and end up killing someone, they don't know where to live, they're nothing. You know what I mean, man? It's putting the public at risk and me at risk. You need to go to the yard, they're starting to shout. Are these men getting increasingly dangerous as they get lost in a broken system? Or do they need to take more account of their own actions and stop blaming everybody else? The Barber School is an attempt to inject responsibility and structure into their lives. This is nice to see you. Ruri is my barber today. So how long have you been learning to do this, Ruri? Years. I was in jail, Barbara, no. I like butcher on the wing, but... What's that mean? What do you mean? Like a butcher, just like butchering people. <laughs> on the wing? Everybody in here thinks they're think a barber. So, they, you know, they all say I'm cut it, but they can't, you know. And that's the way I was. But I got over here and I got on the path pieces and my father quite... The only thing I don't have is a uh, cutthroat. With spark, you know. Cutthroat? Yeah, no, the cutthroat razor for the shaving. That's the only thing I don't have. No, the only half case I don't have. Yeah. Yes. No, well, can't do it, because you're, you're not looting them, are you? You're not, but you're looting everything else. Mm -hmm. What do you need, though? I always get a number zero. Right. To cut all, just to cut all the white hair out. Knock a grey out. You knock it out. We trim off top. A short. We're not too short. <laughs> no skinhead. I ain't got through skinhead. Do you, indeed? Ah, it's it's not happening. No, I've got these. Well, I've got these. How long have you been in for? I'm in four and a half years. So, yeah. so what for? I can get a burglary. And was it a, a life of crime? Drugs is a big part of playing. What age did you start taking them? 13. But you think it's brilliant? So you do, you think it's all fine and dandy? But when you're sitting in your flat by yourself on a Tuesday morning slamming coke like a head case, what are you really doing to your life? Do you know what I mean? So how are you from? Crime. What? Crime burglaries. Had you no guilt back then? No, then, no. Why? I didn't care. I so didn't care about no one but part of myself. So what was your lowest moment? My lowest moment? Maybe the crime I'm in for. Maybe that. And talk me through it. So we just rob someone. Knock the door at night. And the family in the house. And then tied them up. We robbed them. And... Family got put for an awful lot, two of them. They didn't. Well, Were there children in the house? No. But it was, it was a family, it was a man, a woman, and a, a son. So, like a middle aged couple. 
and like a, like an adult song. So you go into the house, and what do you do? Uh, so then robbed them. They were tied up and they were robbed. They were physically tortured. This isn't something he's expecting. No, I know. Isn't it? I know. This really isn't something. I know. What do you mean they were tortured? They were assaulted. They were physically assaulted. They, they were hit. One was hitting a heavy hammer. The same fellow got hit by a kettle of boiling water. And the adult son got hit a few slaps. That's what he did. There's three of us, and that's, that's about as much as I, I, I'm getting into it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't even like, I didn't even know it's just going to affect me like this, I swear to God, then. But. And why would you need to physically harm people if you had them tied up? That's, I, I'm not going down that road because okay. I, there's only so, I can't say, there's only so much I can say. Okay, that's fair and there's only so much of the crime I took part in. That's yes, fair I was involved there, I was there at the hang. That's fair enough. Cutting hair is an escape for Ruri, an escape from addiction, an escape from his past, but reality will always find its way in. You happy enough yet? Brilliant. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. First one's free. Unlike some in here, Ruri seems to realise the harm he's caused. See? The victims of this, they're just ordinary people. They're not even involved in like, criminality. Not that I'd excuse it, but they're just an ordinary people going about their everyday life. And then their life gets turned upside down. So it does. Who the fuck, who the fuck am I in someone's house and turn their life upside down? What gives me a right to do that? They live in a house in the middle of nowhere. Like, there's no neighbours, you know, so there's no help. Like, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, so they could be out living there. Like, they live in a house in the middle of nowhere. Windy night or something, they could get scared, you know, just to get hear things, maybe. You should feel safe in your own home. What gives me the right to do that on someone? And that's exactly what my man says me on the phone and the police agent, where the fuck do you think you are? Do you know what I mean? It's not right, isn't it? And all of these years later, how many years are we after the crime? Five nearly. It, it, you literally fell into that seat when you were thinking about it. Heinous crime. So it is. Heinous. And I didn't. They didn't deserve it. So, like, like I said, they, they, they're just ordinary people going about their ordinary lives. And then on a whatever night it was, Friday, Monday night, whatever, someone comes to their door and robs them, puts them through that. It's not even the other thing. You know, so dirt bird even does something like that. You know what I mean? I, I am, like, I, I genuinely am sorry. And I, I really didn't think we were going to get into this. I really didn't. Hope for the future is what's keeping Ruri going, and his own barber shop is key to that. My father's dead, right? And see when he died, like he didn't leave me enough on her. No, like like no, like you see, like physically. But I was proud of him. I don't know if he knew it or not, but I was always proud of him. He was always my hero. And see my kids, I would love. I like see when they have my wee barbers and all. Like well, that's my daddy's. That's enough for me. This has changed my life. I believe that when I grew up. This is it. Like, there'll be no coming back. I'll like, not even be looking back. I'll just full steam ahead. I'll never be back in this place. I've never said never. But this time I've said it, I'll never be back. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you. Kieran, the volatile prisoner I spoke to in his cell, is cooperating with the prison but it is an uneasy truce. Good and good all day, isn't it? Oh. Out the sun for now, it's ten minutes. Kill all the roots. And Nito clocked what Kieran has just said. He's want to share it. Paddy. No problem. Just let it go, yes. Dang on the car above your head, but 
I know what it is, right? That's all right. You're right. You're actually right. Right. Well, that's it. I forgot I was in the hands of a nerd. Didn't need it. Yes? You want to hear a rap by Michael Hope, Dave McGavery? A rap? Yeah. A rap? Well, of course Aye. I want to hear a rap. Do you want to hear? Yes. Right. Have you written that in here? Yes, I know it all by heart. Up a little Don't body, hurt, Epa! Hold on, I hear him. Hey. The you want to hear it? You ready to go? Yes. Up a little body, hurt. Tell him the shush. Right, shut up a minute, lads. Yeah, I do your head there. Right. The human mental health, it is cruel, it can't be stealthy. We should listen to the doctors, there's a reason they are wealthy. I'm seeking a diagnosis, could possibly be psychosis. I'm struggling day to day, got a history of overdoses. Yeah, I'm punching walls, me. slamming doors, lifetime and metal wars. Painting on a smile so that no one gets alarmed. Drinking juice, feelings, consuming drugs, committing crime. Couldn't see I had a problem, convinced myself that I was fine. I was young, dumb and wild, an immature child. So I paid a heavy price to JJC, I was confined. As I'm sat in an institution and searching for solutions, my mind has turned to poison, been corrupted by pollution. The treatments I received, it wasn't for I was deceived. The things that they were saying, I had started to believe. Cheating, stealing, telling lies, being deceitful, causing cries, taking drugs, making crime, and sobering up and doing the time. And the people that surround me, the devil he has me, so I'm seeking for forgiveness and begging to repent for the sins I have committed, the evil I represent. I'm going on the mission of alcohol remission, and when I do recover, it is time for reminiscing. That's amazing that you have all that. Do you mean what you're saying? That's, that's straight from the heart. That's going to be a Christmas number one, mate. Do they got one, mate? Oh, Give me an eye. You The prison garden, squashed between the blocks, is yet another attempt by the prison to offer ways out. The guy that did this bed, is, I like this. Yeah, love this. He's actually been pressing some of these flowers. This is a big hard man. He's pressing these flowers and put them in a letter, send them to his daughters. I've had guys who've been getting into trouble and fighting, and they've told me since I've come out here, you know, somewhere we can come out and have a bit of peace and quiet. And you sort of lose yourself in the job that you're doing, and they haven't been getting into as much trouble. Can't say it works for everybody. Sure. Some people come out for a couple of weeks, and it's not for them. But the guys that stick at it generally do tend to get really in. To it. Tell you what's better than sitting in a cell all day, isn't it? A hundred percent. What are you up, Jimmy? Well, what's going on? What's going on? Never mind what's going on with me. What's going on with you? Oh, God, I was planting these wee things here. Something to do, man, you know what I mean? Have you ever done this before? I've like, done Before you come into jail? I've done a bit of gardening outside, but it wasn't this type of gardening. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, it was growing all our stuff, do you know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean now. Uh, <laughs> tomatoes and stuff. <laughs> Bits and pieces. Right, OK. Were you ever done for it? No, no, no. Well, let's not then. All right, let's not incriminate ourselves. No, <laughs> no, let's not do that. So tell me the truth. What's jail do for you or not do for you? You know what I mean? Whenever I work, I'll be sweet. Whenever I don't work, that's that's a problem. Do you know what I mean? Days flying when you're working. Which of the ones will I do next here, man? Right, we'll put your label in. You've done your dolphin names. As you finish oh, those, yeah, just yeah. set them to one side. What do you call them again, them ones? They're basil. Jamie hasn't been getting into as much bother since he's been coming out here. He's calmed down a bit. That's the feedback that I've been getting off some of the officers. He can give me a bit of hassle, but it's just a bit of banter. <laughs> What's the hassle now? You get, Richard? What's the banter you get? Oh, well, you might be getting shouted at for your five bellies, and I'm getting shouted well, at for Well, he does. He has a bald head, you know what I mean? That's a start, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> for the shine off my head. Now he's sitting trying to plant stuff, so I do, and then you get a beam coming off his head, and, like someone's doing <laughs> the morning sun, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, this is not a few sound getting, Jamie. I know that, Stephen. Some of the boys don't like it, I don't think. I think quite a few of them don't like me. What have you done on them? I don't know. Nah, no, man, neither do you. Watch the skill and authority Anita has when taking Kieran on. I was not having to go with you, right? Oh, I, uh, I was trying to keep you right. You shout it, kill all. Oh, but he's, he's, he's saying, I hold on, they're saying some of the attacks, no. but others. But, so imagine if I turned around and said to you, 
kill all Catholics, kill all Protestants. I know, I know, I know. Think about it. But I'm not gonna, all, I'm yeah. not gonna lie and be someone that I'm not. I'm yes, gonna tell If you have an opinion, truth. you keep that opinion yourself. I'm sorry, I didn't apologize for it. Here, I, I don't forgot. want you to apologize. I just tell you keep yourself true. No, you're, keep yourself true. You're, you're right, but I'm right too. But, uh, yes, but everybody has opinions, but you can't voice them. I'm sorry, but no, but I forgot I was in the last place. I did. I did. I forgot. You've got a wrong officer, wrong day. What would happen? You'd be charged, adverse, da da da. I'm in a position where I can tell you why I'm doing it. Sure, lady, but I forgot myself. Sorry. The next prisoner is Jackie. He claims that drink, drugs, and a gambling addiction led to him spiraling out of control. But those who are now tending to his victim's grave. Hey, Jackie. Hello, Stephen. Would say he should have got help before he killed. Life was hectic, to say the least. I was working steady. Do uh, what? Well, I was fitting wood burning stoves, building trades, stuff like that. I'm a joiner by trades, so I've always worked, like, don't get me wrong, I've always worked. But fully with my wife, just lost all my family life, sort of home life, as people would be used to. So I was gambling, running up debts, I was playing in my mind. And there was arguments over money, over this, over that. I was turning to other things to get away from that. That was me on a, a, a downward spiral. I went headlong into gambling, and then I went headlong into drugs. And then we get to the night of the crime. Well, I was sitting in a house, decided to go somewhere else to party, and sat in this fella's house, stayed there most of the night, and then went to a different location where the crime happened and stuff, uh, five, six o'clock in the morning. There was a friend with us at the time when we went to his house, Stephen. I was going on to get more cocaine, and once the off-license opened in the morning, then we went to get hard liquor, which was Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, and beer as well. So you were shooting cocaine or whatever you do, yeah, you snort it yeah. into the middle of the night, yeah. then first thing in the morning, yeah. you're off getting alcohol. Yeah, and there was also... And you're a 40-year-old man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see how it's painful. Well, it's a life of it's chaos. Bad. It's, it's chaotic. Just how did this guy it. come into it? Um, it was his, his property, his house. And the other fella that I was with that took me there, he left, and it was just him and I, we were left. I can't remember at the time whether I left to get more alcohol, but there was a, de there was a definite blank there um, for 20 minutes or so. The next thing I remember at that point, as I say, was sitting on the chair with the guy almost in the position you're in to the, to the left of me. And it turned around and says, I'm suicidal, but I'm Catholic and I, could, I wouldn't go to heaven. Could you do it? And I thought he was joking. And I, went, and I was drunk and off my head and went, of course I could. And then I elaborated from there, let's say. And he got more and more serious. We'll go then, we'll do it, we'll go. And I thought it was a wind up at the start and just was going, aye, dead on, dead on, dead on. We kept on and on and on. And Minutes later, I focused on the table, which is a coffee table, and there was nine knives lined up. And it struck me, where did that, they come from? I didn't put them there. And I'm, I think I'm, I'm right in saying in evidence they were fingerprinted, and I had no fingerprints on the knives. So anyway, it elaborated from there. It got aggressive after that in regards to the way he was saying, well, go, will you do it? No, I'm going, no, and I, bad language, F off, no, that's it, bang. So more and more and more, and finally then, my temper broke, and I stood up, and I grabbed him by, by the scruff around the throat and clogged him with the right hand, and I'm left-handed anyway, but that's strange. After that, it was m far more aggressive. I was sent down, he was jumping up, going, well, good, is that all you're gonna do? And, but I, at the time, had it in my head that he was going to go for the knife, and I went for the knife first. And when I went, well, you ever fuck up and pulled it back? And he went, well, go well. And it swiped and it cut his throat. And that was that. That was that. The judge disagreed. The court found that Jackie walked to the kitchen, lifted a weapon, and came back to commit his murder. The 
blood came out of him and it hit me. And it was, I was at that point shocked. And he just literally slouched down and hit, hit the ground. And instantly, I knew it was wrong. I knew what I'd done. And I closed my eyes. And it seemed to me like I was in a movie. And that's the truth. That's the gospel truth. Uh, to me, it was like a, an awe, a deadness. And the next thing came through in my mind was, what would they do in the Sopranos? Burn the place. That was me on complete go here. Tried to light a doily, paper towel, in the toaster. And I threw it onto a drying cloth and left. Um, next thing I was in the car, I was driving my car. I was up ditches and down ditches and all sorts. But that lasted for a good hour, an hour and a half. Now, I'm not sure where I went or who I was going to see. Ran out of fuel. Walked across the Joe Carriage way to get diesel out of a farm. And I did, I got a five litre drum of red diesel. Come back to the car and I took the feller cab off the car and then I was hit by a car and my legs were completely damaged. I woke up two days later and some of my family were there, but about an hour later, then the police come in and informed me I was under arrest, suspicion of murder arson, perverting the course of justice. What is the feeling in your brain at that instant you've killed somebody? Disbelief, because I could never have imagined myself in that position. I'd done a terrible Even thing. Even the physicality of what you did yeah, yeah. terrifies me. Absolutely, I can understand that. I've, I see, you see it in movies, it terrifies me too, you know, them things aren't everyday things. So this kind of this kind of stretches us all in that how much are we prepared to accept that human beings will do really bad things and then do we give them a second chance? I'm not trying to justify it, as I said before, but well, I don't was terrible. But the explanation for it hopefully is can make it understandable as to how I was possibly in that position to start with. Since he came into prison, Jackie's off drugs and is trying to rebuild himself, working in the wood shop and studying for a degree so that he can come back into society. He's likely to be in his 50s when he's released. As part of his rehab, how much money should we should society spend on training him, rehabilitating him, educating him? It's an OU degree studying. It's uh, criminology, part psychology in it as well, and, and also sociology. It's, it's an open degree, but it involves all those modules. So I'm using that to try and better understand what I've done. The prison will give you opportunities. It's whether you accept and work with those opportunities. Jackie's chaotic freefall ended with the horrific murder of a man, and it disturbs me. Unlike the man he killed, when Jackie gets out of jail, he will be able to start again. But there's a question whether society will give him an opportunity after his crime. Would you give him a job, a welcome, a second chance? On my way out of the prison, I have to walk through the committal wing. It processes prisoners who have just arrived from court and others about to go home after serving their time. I've spotted a young prisoner about to get out. You're getting out today, Lee? Yeah. How long have you been in for? Four months. What'd you do? Doing this driving, feeling the sob, just driving the fences. And what's that about? I don't know, I just like the wizard, I suppose. You know you're going to get caught. They're not going to give up till they catch you. So why not stop? There's drugs in the wet out. You know, I couldn't stop at the place when they're putting the lights on. It's after that. And you were high and drunk? Yeah, drink? Yeah. Drink or drugs? Both. Can we sit down for one minute? Yeah, yeah. So talk to me about, uh, talk to me about the addiction. What drugs? Coke. And how long have you been doing coke? A few years. It only, got, it only got bad last 12 months. Like, grams and grams a night, partying. Fuck. It's over and done with now, I suppose. Were you addicted, do you think, coming in? Oh, definitely, yeah. How often were you using? Every day. 
But not being an irony that I stay in all of it. 100%. Child there, Mr. Child's birthday from being in here and everything, you know. How old is the child kid? Four. Boy, girl? Boy. I'm not missing no more birthdays. I'm not missing nothing no more. Your victims are having their cars, presumably what? Stolen? No, I know. You were racing along a road, you knocked down a kid, you knocked down anybody? No, I wasn't thinking. A lot of respect for a person who stole the car of Tilly, I don't even know why I did it. Just drinking drugs, you know? I regret it, like. But it's done now. So, like, did they chase you for long or yeah, what? Yeah, managed to get in the round of the same. What? <laughs> Big chase. Big chase. And how did they stop you? I got away and they got me in a flat. I feared like an hour later. What's it feel like when you're nabbed? Didn't feel good, especially not when they're being rough. But I suppose they've every right to be rough whenever you're endangering other people's lives for an hour, an hour and a half up the road. What's life like in here? What makes it tough? Missing people. Missing ones you love. Especially when you come in addicted to drinking drugs as well, it's not good, look. You're in here, you're asking people, is there anything here and stuff, you know, it's not good. And how easy is it to get stuff in it's here? It's easier in here to get drugs than it is outside, look. Come on. 100%. 100%. Sure, I always have to, it's, it's, it's easy, trust me. So the question clearly is, are you just going to be back in a few months' time no. again? Oh, no way. Not be back. Hey there, no four-year-olds. Hey there, no, and not be back late. Not at home. So, what literally happens today? Like, will you be allowed to see your wee boy? Yeah, I would you? Yeah. That's gonna be pretty amazing. Can't wait. It's fuck's sake. It's been a long time coming. It's hard like, when you're in here, especially when you're on the phone and you're talking to them. You know, they're asking questions. Where are you? Feels good, finally good. Definitely. Listen, thank you.